morning, everyone, and welcome to the Link Baptist Church. We are going to jump right on ahead into our Sunday school lesson this morning. And uh, before we get started, let's, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we give you praise this morning in Jesus' name. We say thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you so much for who you are and for all that you do for us and just who you are, mainly, Lord, who you are. And Father, we pray today that you would open our eyes to our hearts so that we might see, we might hear from you. Lord Jesus, we bless your name. Please bless us on this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Now, if you look at the book, I don't have a numbering system. I have a topical system. It's the promise of a new covenant, and the next one is God's covenant with Abraham. And uh, I'm going to combine these two today. So next week, we'll start with loyalty to leaders. In the revised edition, for those who are going to help write the revised edition, duly note that the God's covenant to Abram is going to come out. We're going to combine the two. We're going to combine the covenants together. The new co I'm going to go over God's co covenant with Abram today also. So that's what I'm saying about uh, moving forward. So our next week lesson will be loyalty to leaders. And, and here's the deal today. If you don't get the covenants today, you won't understand what loyalty to leaders is in spite of your feelings, your emotions. Because if you're, right at, you're at the mercy of your feelings, your emotions, you can't be loyal to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't be loyal to, loyal to the leadership that is placed before you. We've opened the scriptures and uh, we, we've prayed. Now we're going to open the scriptures. Got a question for you. The great state of Texas, they had a Severe snowstorm and ice storm a week or two ago. Y'all hear about that? All right, some people, when, 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 when you get your power bill, you can get a fixed rate or you can get a rate that fluctuates with the market, right? All right, so if you sign a contract saying that as long as the rates are low, I pay a low rate, right? But when the rates get high, I'm agreeing to pay a higher rate also. I mean, that's what you're saying. I like it when they're low, but when they get high, I'm not probably not going to like it. But do you sign the contract? Yes, sir. So you sign a contract because most of the time, 99% of the time, it's low. But that 1% of the time, that it gets high. So people getting light bills, power bills, $10,000. Hold on, that's what you signed up for. Are you with me? As long as the rate was low, you were fine. But because you didn't read the fine print, you are now in a pickle. There's a thing about being right, and there's another thing about righteousness, the right thing to do. But if you sign a contract saying that I'm going to pay the bill, I, I, we like the $40 or $50 bills, right? But then a snow, an ice storm hit, you still got power, but the rates have gone up now. You agreed to pay for that also. You did. Yeah. When the rate is variable, variations, variance, when it changes, your contract changes. Now, that's what you signed up for. So you can get mad at the power company, but that's what you signed up for. That's your right to get angry, but it's their right to demand your money. But here where righteousness comes in here. Righteousness says, if I'm the power company, I need to negotiate with you because you signed a contract Did I give you a bad contract. And if I gave you a bad contract, why did you sign it? Or was the contract so that as long as you prospered, you were fine? But when I prosper, when you're not fine. Talk to me. Well, no, don't talk to me, but still on. Because, of the, the, listen, let me, tell, let me tell you something. Why we have to stand for the truth and, and, and why we have to make covenants. Because in the last days with Paul, with the church at Thessalonica, in 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, a lie was being told that the resurrection had already happened. And that's why he wrote the book. Because people believed they had missed out on the resurrection of Jesus. So if you hear at any funeral, you're going to hear 1 Thessalonians 4 about those who are dead and those who are asleep. And Paul uses this terminology, Miss Eva. He said, I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant, my brother, 
And ignorant is not a bad thing. It's just, you just don't know. When you know the other side of the coin, before, you know, when, when gas bills, are, uh, you know, a lot of people have a gas bill in the house. Now, if you got a fixed rate, you're tied in for a certain amount. But if you got a variable rate, it, it, in the summertime, you're not going to use the gas that you use in the wintertime. So your gas bill is going to go up. Well, you got a fixed or variable rate, by the way. But people, be careful the covenant that you make and, the, and what you sign in your name. Be careful. Today we're going to talk about covenants. Because your word's got to be your bond. It's got to be. If that's what you agreed upon, that's what you agreed. Even if you signed a bad contract, you still have to honor the contract. Now, contract laws, you can go to court. But if you signed it, that's the deal. That's just the deal. Now, Christ signed a contract for us. And at the bottom, he said this, tell us stop. Send that, paid in full. How many people agree with that? But he said, God says, you've got to accept this son, Jesus. Now, if you want to send that paid in full, accept God's son. If you don't accept God's son, your sin debt is not paid in full. So obedience got to be the key here. Somebody's got to be obedient. And I, I don't know if Keisha said it this morning or last night, but here's the problem. God is the covenant keeper. Mankind is a covenant breaker. We break the covenant with God, but thanks be to God, Deacon Neal just said outside for God's twins, grace and mercy. And, and, and in Texas, those people got to ask the, the, the company, have mercy. Is that right? Yeah. Are you too proud for the, you signed the contract? They gave you power when nobody else had it. So you need to pay what you agreed to pay. But righteousness says, do the right thing, man. Break that bill down from 10,000. Is a thousand good enough? Think about it. If your family was protected in an ice storm, is it worth a thousand dollars to you? It is, it's worth the 10000 Because you know how many people lost their lives and lost plumbing because they, they got, to, got to do $10,000 worth of work in the house. I'm going somewhere, guys. Be careful about the agreements that you make. Yeah, be careful how you sign your name, when you sign your name, and who, who you allow to use your name. Yeah, because your word, it is your bond. That's all you got is your word. So today we're going to talk about the promise of a new covenant. God made several covenants with the nation of Israel. He made several of them, but all of them were leading to one big covenant. Just like we are in life. All these agreements we make with Georgia Powell, if you make an agreement with Georgia Powell, it's, I tell you where I turn your lights on. But on the seventh of every month, you need to pay a bill for what you owe. When the seventh come around, you don't have the money. You can say, Georgia Powell, will you have mercy on me, please? They will extend mercy. But how many times are they going to extend mercy with you? Not many. They're not. I mean, they will extend mercy. People are so, they want to take the good parts of the covenant and not the bad parts. And people, there is a give and take. I was talking with Deacon Baker and Deacon Neal outside coming in, and Deacon Baker was talking about a procedure he had. Two, two procedures, an old one and a new one. And when I hear what he's been through and what he's got, and Deacon Neal's talking about his knees and his uh, what is it, hip. And I'm trying to say, Lord, help me lose this stress in my belly. I'd rather have my stress in my belly than have them two brothers going through. You hear what I'm saying? The point is, everybody makes an agreement with God. God makes an agreement with everybody. He's a creator. He created all of us, but he gave everybody their own issues they got to deal with. Now, when you make the agreement with God, do, do you really give God your issues that you're dealing with? Do you really say, God, this is your problem, not mine? Because, hold on now, remember, you, remember, you say you belong to him now. So, you know, now, 
I got a problem, but it's really your problem because I belong to you. Are we bold enough to tell God, I got this problem in this body, but you created me and you own me, so you need to handle this for me because I got work to do for you. Have I lost y'all this morning? I want, I want, if, if nothing else, I want you to uh, understand. We have the course today in contract law, all right? <laughs> covenants, people, on the real. About the covenants that we go through and the covenants that we make. I want to read this and I want to go to the, to the board. Anybody want to say anything before we get open up? All right, here we go. Uh, in the Old Testament, in the Old Agreement, God wrote covenants on tablets. Remember that. It was on paper. It was on stone. In the New Testament, you didn't write it, but God wrote his testament on your heart when you accepted his son, Jesus. Excuse me. Now, some people are still living under the Old Testament because they have not accepted God's son, Jesus. So if you have not accepted God's son, Jesus, you are accountable for every sin you've ever committed coming out of the womb. How dare you cry coming out of the womb? What's wrong with you, baby? How the baby going to cry coming out of the womb? Is he guilty of sin right then? Is the baby guilty of sin? Psalm 51 said, it was in sin that I was conceived. You don't have to teach that baby how to cry because he want to go back in. Dude, you out now. You're not going back. So when the baby comes out, he was conceived in sin. So he's already got sin nature in him coming into this world. Knowing that, that the baby needs Christ when he come, when the womb is open and he comes into the world, he needs Christ then. Somebody needs to be praying for the baby because he doesn't know that he needs prayer. He doesn't. But we know according to Psalm 51, he has sin already in him. We don't have to te teach a newborn baby how to sin. You don't. He, that's understood. It's innate. It's within him. Here we go. In the New Testament, God wrote the covenant on the heart of his people for those that believe. Write that, uh, Miss Carmen and Mr. J, please, for those that would believe. That's a sentence somebody being there. The old covenant was written on stone, and the people were to internalize the laws, know what they say, know what they mean, and do something about them. God had a plan all along with all of the Old Testament deal. He had a plan. The plan was that the new covenant would be written on our hearts, of the Lord, uh, uh, by God, founded on the concept of the life, the, the concept of the life, death, burial, resurrection, and the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Gospels. The Gospels are the key to the Bible because they bring in God's Son. That's the middle part of the Old Testament, the Gospels, then we got the epistles, and we got the writers. So we got our Old Testament right here, you got four Gospels, Old Testament plus the four Gospels, plus the, the letters to the churches, and the letters that individuals wrote going to be the, the whole counsel of God. Remember that, Acts 20, the whole counsel of God. Because what people want to do, they want to pick out scriptures that, that's okay with them. They don't want to go by the whole, when you sign a contract, you sign the entire contract. You didn't just sign the good parts for yourself. You signed the, the entire contract. Now, Acts 20, I'll go with that a little later. But that needs to be in a new book also. Please write that now. Acts 20 is going to have to go now. The whole counsel of God. Because when you make a contract, you have to keep your end of the bargain. The gospel of Jesus Christ came to all who would believe that God had provided a way to renew and restore his relationship with God. And that's a, a big problem now. People feel like they don't need Christ because they're pretty good people. They don't bother anybody. Every now and then they help the homeless and the poor. 
They'll pay a tax every now and then, but they have a righteousness that's their own. God is the one who told us to go to church. God is the one who said that the church was his bride. You don't have to accept his bride, and you don't have to go to heaven. Even though you're doing a lot of good deeds, if you're not the bride of Christ, you don't make it into heaven. Now, that shouldn't be a, a fine print in your contract. You need to know that up front, that the key to contract is God's son. Do you accept the fact that you're the one who's supposed to die on Calvary the way, you, the way it is? That, that was your death. But we accept the contract that Christ died for us. He was a substitute for, he was a propitiation. He's the, he, he, he is what made peace with God for me, for you. Christ made peace with God for you by the cross of Calvary. See, the, the, the sign, the symbol of love, as the world would define it, wrongly, by the way, is a pretty red heart. Is that right? What about St. Valentine's Day and a diamond? That's another sign of love, right? Someone says, I can't marry you unless you get me a diamond, a big old pretty diamond. The only sign of love that's in the scriptures Calvary. It's the cross, baby. That's it. It's a bloody cross. It, it, it has nothing to do with a heart or a diamond. It is the cross of Jesus Christ. Nothing more, nothing less. But see, if you listen to what the world says, you miss it. How much money was made on St. Valentine's Day by retailers? Because they said, the only way you prove your love, that's the proof of love right there, the cross. Don't buy into the lie of the world. When you make a covenant with Christ, make sure you read all the fine print in the Bible. Make sure you get taught what's really going on here. Let's go a little deeper. Uh, the problem was that mankind had drifted so far away from God, Jesus knew the only way that man could enjoy an intimate and a personal relationship back with God was by him building or becoming the bridge that will lead us back to God. Redemption is at the cross when you say, you know what, God? And you're not going to sign a contract. But remember, it's a hard thing. Redemption says, I, I believe that. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. And that's the only way to God. And then you have been bought and purchased by the blood of Christ. You have been redeemed. Once you accept, you really believe in your heart. That's why salvation, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God did raise him from the dead, you shall be saved. Redemption and salvation, they always have to go together. So if you're saved, the first thing you do, you accepted redemption. If, if you think about it like this right here. If you are a slave on the block, you say, I, I accept the price that Christ paid. No longer are you a slave. That Christ has paid this price that now no longer you're a slave, that you belong to him. And then he's going to take you to a safe place, which is what salvation is all about. Your body may be here, but you know that your soul is going to be with the Lord and your spirit definitely is going back to God. Go ahead, Miss Desiree. Hey, yes, I just had a question. I, I was thinking, um, is the first covenant the ma uh, marriage between Adam and Eve? Um, and I, I don't know, and I would just want to know if they loved each other. Was that not a sign of love as well? Yeah, there are plenty of signs of love in here. I'm talking about the contract. I tell you what, let me uh yes, ma'am, that was it's called the the, the 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 that's the marriage contract, and I'm gonna state that in the notes. It, the marriage contract, the 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 contract God made with Adam and Eve was to be fruitful and multiply and to have dominion over this, this garden. They broke the contract in the very beginning. They they broke the contract with God when it, behind her sinning and giving the fruit to him, and he sinned with her. He agreed with his wife more than he agreed with God. And that broke the contract. And they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. The, the seraphim, the, the, the warring angels, they hid the Garden of Eden so no one could find it. Marriage is a part of the contract, but it's not one of the covenants. It is a covenant that man makes with God. That's why he said what God has put together, no, let, let no man put asunder, A-S-U-N-D-R. The saw it in two, that the husband and the wife are one now one. 
Thank you. Does that help you? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, who's Carmen? Are you up? Can I get the sign school notes, please? Here, here you go, Judge Rap. I think this is a contract. It's a treaty. It's an agreement or a will. Adam nor the woman signed a contract with God. It was a verbal agreement. They made an agreement that he'd give them the garden. They can have everything except for the tree in the midst, in the middle of the garden. Don't touch it. As destiny and fate would have it, that's the only thing that she really wanted to deal with. Now, you think about it. You got a garden with a million things in it. But it's this one golden tree that stands out of you that I, I just got to have. The one thing you don't need, and God telling you don't need it, they are convinced by the enemy that they do need it. A covenant is a contract, a treaty. It's an agreement between parties. It's an agreement or it's a will. The covenant establishes the basis of relationship conditions for that said relationship about the promises and the conditions of the relationship and, if the, con and the consequences. Here are the problem, Desiree. The consequences if the conditions are met. When you break the con when you break the contract, Adam and Eve broke the contract by partaking of the fruit that the devil. God told them one thing, the devil told them another. They obeyed the devil better than obeying God, more than obeying God. Most familiar today is marriage, and that's why I got in there. There are several co covenants. And, and one I left off, uh, several I left off, uh, Desiree, I left off the Noahic, the, I mean, the uh, Adamaic. The Adamaic covenant says that they were supposed to be fruitful and multiply and have dominion, have power over the earth, over the animals, over everything, that they were supposed to be God's greatest, the crown jewel of all his creation was mankind. That is the Adamaic covenant. Now, after Adam, you're going to have your first covenant is going to be Adam is going to come and he's going to have kids. And one of the boys is going to be God awful. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Y'all know who I'm talking about. That boy, that was so bad. Cain. And after that, it, the world's going to get wicked. God's going to say, man, look at mankind. He's going to give us a second chance with a new and better covenant. And it's going to be called the Noahic covenant. The, on the covenant with Noah, let's go, Miss Carmen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go back. Let me, let me go back. I didn't read it. There are several covenants in the Bible. Five are very crucial for understanding the concept, the story, and God's redemptive plan. Have you noticed everything goes back to redemp redemption? The contract you first made in your heart, because it's not written anywhere, but it's written on your heart. That's how you know God's word is true. That is written. I, I made an agreement with God in my heart that I'm going to follow his son, Jesus. And that's what you tell people. I made an agreement. In my heart, and I'm gonna, and I'm not here to please people. I'm here to follow Jesus and do what He'd have me to do. The story of God's redemption plan—that's the start of it. That's not the end of it. Go ahead, Miss Carmen. The first was the Noah covenant. Noah covenant. Genesis nine. This covenant established with Noah after the flood. Mister Noah preached to some people for a hundred and twenty-five years, and you know those folks that nobody got saved on his watch. Nobody but his family. And that brother preached 120 years. That's a long time to preach. And nobody's listening. So when you preach the gospel and you don't have the likes that you want on Facebook, it's all right. It is a pretty good pat. It's bad, but it's okay because you see the pattern. People haven't listened to God since the creation of time. Adam and Eve didn't. The people in Noah's day, they didn't. What make, and Christ, they didn't do it when Jesus was here, the person of Christ was here. They just not going to do it. They're not. But it's not because we're not duty bound to tell them. We still owe it to them. Oh, no man, nothing but the love. The love of God and the love of Jesus Christ and the love of your neighbor. This is the covenant God established with Noah because of Adam and Eve. After the flood, which God resets. Because he told Adam and Eve to do something, they didn't do it. So he resets and he renews the blessings of creation, as he told Adam and Eve. Reaffirming God's image, remember in Genesis chapter 1, verse 24 through 26, he's going to tell them that we, the, 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 the Godhead, 
Adam, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, created mankind in the image of God. Reaffirming God's image in humanity and the work of dominion. You take care of the grounds. Don't let plastics, take care of the ground. Don't let plastics destroy the earth. Don't let chemicals destroy everything around you. This covenant promises the preservation of humanity and provides restraint of human evil and violence. And here's the part, Desiree, that people don't like. God is a God of love, but they don't like the fact that he's holy. And you can't do what you want to do when you want to do it. Everybody talk about God's love. God is love, but he's also holy. And he gives us restraints. He said, we can't do everything we think we want to do. Yeah, and that's the part that people don't like. As I started by telling you about the covenant with, that you make with Texas Power. If you make that covenant, I mean, listen, they should give you work with you, but they don't have to. Because you threw away your rights when you signed the contract. But the righteousness of God says, hey, you know that's ridiculous. Give somebody a break. That's why you want to make sure people are saved on your watch. This promise of preservation of humanity and provides restraint. It, God said he was going to preserve humanity. He tried to get more people saved, but only eight people got saved on Mr. Noah's watch, and they were in his family. His wife, his three boys, and their wives. Those only people got saved. That's so sad, isn't it? That that man preached 120 years and nobody got saved. No one got saved, but he preached 120 years. When you look at the note and what's happening, the second covenant after Noah is going to come this guy by the name of Abraham. Abraham's going to make a covenant with God. Abram is going to make a covenant with God, and it's going to be as he is in the natural, doing his own thing. God used him, but he couldn't use him fully. When God decided to give him a name change, that we went from being Christian, from being John, a mirror, to being a Christian, a blood-bought believer. That's when the name change came with us. And we look at here, here's the sweet news about it. In Genesis chapter 12 through chapter 15, this is the most central, this is most central to the biblical story. God promises Abraham a land called Israel, he doesn't know it then. Descendants, it's going to be us who are going to be grafted in, all of us right now. A part of this covenant we live in right now, and blessings. The blessings promised Abraham to extend, through him, extend him through all people on the earth. We came in on a part of the Abrahamic covenant. You need to know that. That, Christ, that when, when Christ died, he died for us, but we were not a part of the olive branch, but we were grafted in. And only God can do that. We were part, became a part of the olive branch, of the peace branch behind what Christ did, what our Lord Jesus did. Go ahead, Ms. Carmen. Covenant number three, the Mosaic Covenant. After Adam and Noah, you had Abraham. Then you got Moses in Exodus chapter one and two is going to come. All those previous, the first three uh, covenants were in Genesis. Now we get to the Exodus, when everybody has made a covenant with God, God has told them to leave, so they leave. And they go into that place that he promised Abraham, to that land. They're going to that land, Canaan, which is a type of heaven, a promised land. It is a natural, a physical land. Heaven is a spiritual land, baby. Come on, somebody. Yeah, it is a type. All of these are leading to the Lord's Christ coming. All of these are leading to Christ coming. And Christ is going to be the open door. He's the door that is going to take us to the next level. And the only way through redemption that you get to Christ is going to be through, the uh, only way you get to God is going to be through his son, Jesus, that he is the door. Exodus 9, chapter 19 through chapter 24, God established the covenant at Mount Mount Sinai represents the flesh. Remember that. Mount Calvary is going to represent the spirit. Everything that, I mean, everything in the Bible, there's no junk, there's no waste in there. Everything has a purpose and everything has a, a meaning. 
God had to make the covenant at Mount Sinai because that was a deal about, it was a fleshy thing. It was a natural thing. As I told you, the fruit in the Old Testament were the big grapes that big. It was the, it was the, the honey. In the New Testament, the fruit is love, is joy, is peace, is kindness, is goodness. It is a spiritual fruit. In the Old Testament, it was a physical, fleshly fruit. This covenant supplies the law. The law of God, there's 613 laws that God's going to leave in the Old Testament. From the Decalogue, from the Ten Commandments, are going to come the rest of the law. But they all started with ten. If mankind could have obeyed the ten, they would have need, needed the next 603. They wouldn't have. But because God knew that we could not keep the full law, again, it's pointing to the fact that God's going to send his son, Jesus. But, you know, when, you, when, when these people are going through that, they don't, they don't realize that. It's hard sometimes to go through stuff when you're going through the middle of a storm. But that's the main time you got to depend on the word of God. This kind of is a law that is meant to govern and to shape the people of Israel and when they get to the promised land, again, God is love, but he's holy. When you get over that, you can't mix and mingle with the people outside of this land. Well, they're going to do it anyway. That's where the Samaritans come into play. When people go to doing their own thing outside of the will of God, that's when trouble happens. Y'all with me? Any questions? Any comments? <laughs> All right, this covenant supplies the law that is meant to govern and shape the people of Israel in the promised land. It was not a means of salvation. It was, it, Israel could not save people. The land, Canaan, could not save people. There's, on, there on, there's only salvation by one name, and that's Jesus Christ. But everything in the Old Testament is going to show us Christ was already, God was already setting up for his son Jesus to come. Now, you have to know the person of Christ, the Holy Spirit that he's going to call after he leaves, and God the Father. God the Father had a plan that was perfect all along. It was perfect. Now, I take that back. It is perfect. It's perfect. But when you've got a plan and God has a plan, his plan should take over your plan. Regardless of what you think or what you feel, his plan should supersede your plan. It was not a means of salvation, but with distinguished people from surrounding nations. They were supposed to stand out, like the church, supposed to be a light and salt around everybody, everybody's around the church because the nation didn't do it, because they violated the contract, the church is supposed to do it. And is the church doing it? Just like the people violated God's contract. Is the church doing the same thing? Because we're so trying to please people that we say we love. And if you love them, you owe them the truth. Stand on the truth of God's word. And if they love you, they may not tell you right then, but they'll accept it. They will. And if, they're not, if they reject what you said, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the word of God. And then you know how to pray for them even more because they reject it. As I said in Paul's day in 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, the lie, the big lie, was that the resurrection already happened. Paul said it hadn't happened. They thought when Christ left that like two weeks after that, it was, it was a done deal. It wasn't. He had to let them know, no, no, sir. Not on that second Thessalonians, he's going to tell them that not only going to leave according to the letter of first Thessalonians, the second letter going to tell you the delusion going to be so, God ain't going to play with you in the first one. But in the second one, He's going to send a delusion so strong in 2 Thessalonians, some people think they're going to get saved. That they're going to, I take that back. The Bible says they're going to believe the lie. And you see people now believing lies all the time because of where they get. They will not trust the word of God. They'll trust any and everything before they trust the word of God. Yeah. The big lie, that's what it's called now. right now today. It's called a big lie. And God said that they, they didn't just believe the lie. They bought the lie. They bought into it. They spent money on it. They put time into it. They put energy into it. They put their heart into the lie. It was not a means of salvation, but would distinguish the people from surrounding nations as a kingdom of priests. 
a people, and that's what we'll be in heaven. Did y'all know that? Yeah, we're going to be leaders and rulers and priests. You know, we're called now to be priests, according to 1 Peter 2. A royal priesthood, a holy nation. Come on, y'all. Peculiar. Come on, y'all. We're just a little bit different because of Jesus. These are the covenants that God made with us, but how many people walk in the covenant? People enjoyed the lights and the gas in Texas as long as it benefited them. But when it was time to benefit the light and gas company, they got a problem. But you signed a deal. Whether they make an agreement, whether they negotiate with you and cut your bill down, and humanely they should. Righteousness says they should. But guys, they don't have to. They just don't have to. They can be mean, wholehearted, but that's the rule of the world, right? So if it's, you got a $10,000 bill, they might give you a $5,000 bill. But if you look at it spiritually, was it worth it to protect your family? Because you could have turned it off. You didn't have to turn it on. You have to turn any lights, any gas, you wouldn't have a bill. But you might not be here either. Y'all are, whew. Yes, sir, please. Help me out, Ron. Help me. I, I was just thinking a real good example is what we see happening. And I hate to m mention politics, but politics is a good example. Uh, my heart goes out to all of those people who stand up for truth and, and moral values because, because they go against the lie that's being told. They risk losing their political careers. But more important than their p political careers is their moral values. And so- Is what, Ron? Is their moral values. Can I use that in my sermon? Amen. <laughs> and, so, and so we see it. We see, we saw only a few people, only a few people we see stand up for what's morally right. The rest of everybody else seem to buy into the situation, and not because they, uh, they believe in it, but because of the fact that they don't want to lose yes. nothing by going against it. And that's how it is for the Christian. You know, you know, when you stand up for what's right, you, when you stand up for Christ, you're going to be criticized. You're going to face a lot of opposition. And some people will compromise because they can't deal with the pressure. But the idea is to stick to your values and know that by doing so, ultimately, in the end, you come out the winner. I'm a real brother. The title of my sermon is Moral Cowardice. <laughs> it is. Amen. It's, it's more cowardice. People Amen. who know. I just sent to several people in the church who, listen, uh, but because so much of the rioting of the capital was done in Jesus' name. Did y'all know that? Oh. It was Christians. Amen. And that's the problem. That's why young folk don't want to have anything to do with this Christ. Amen. Because Amen. if they go up there and they did that, and, and now the Christian church on their behalf, honestly, some of them are trying to clean up what they messed up. All right. After the fact, after the fact, yeah, they are. I've, I got about 10 articles. I sent them to several of y'all last night. I sent them to you because now they're having a reckoning and a come to Jesus to know that those people did a lot of that stuff. They got Trump flag and they got Jesus flags. Yes, sir. Yes, and they sir. calling out Jesus name. So the younger generation, they don't have anything to do with this Jesus. That's why the missing link. Y'all have got to really live this thing. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Righteousness and truth. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Bob. <laughs> All right, I'm, 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 our next one is this right here. We're on the, we just did the Mosaic Covenant. No, let me finish out the, this covenant, the Mosaic Covenant. It was conditional. It had, Nico, I didn't know you had a question. No, let me read this out. Let me read this out first. It was conditional. It had conditions to it. And it defined blessing and it defined curses based upon obedience and disobedience, whether you did what you say you're going to do or not. 
as I was telling you about my friend Wayne from Wayne's used car. Wayne said, I say a car. <laughs> and he will. But if you miss a payment, Wayne will sneak up on you and get his car back. But that's the contract you sign. He'll be your best friend until you don't pay him his money. People in Macon, Georgia, remember that from the 70s, 80s. They don't know what I'm talking about. They know when Wayne used cars, he, he'll, he'll get on TV, he'll love you to death. So just sign the bottom line. But if you miss a payment, he ain't giving you no grace. He ain't giving you any mercy. But you know that going in, that when you miss it, you got you to go back to him. Then he's going to recharge you again. Go ahead, Mr. Nico. Um, I just want to talk about the covenant. Ah, uh, it's, <laughs> it's a real, it's a real thing. There's nothing to play with. Um, when I found out what a covenant was, I made like these miniature covenants just between me and him. And, uh, the first one was with Desiree's first car. She had bought this orange Saturn. I... But man, look, let me tell you. That thing put me through some things. <laughs> look, but it made her nervous. Every time she'll drive it, it just it made her uh just stress. So I made a covenant with God. I, I asked him if if he took this car off her hands, if I could take the car off her hands. Uh I be in the church more. I start doing stuff in the church. And he said, okay. And God bless her with the fiesta out there. And so um, I took the orange car and I drove it for a minute. I was coming to church with it. And then I start not showing up for church, like more and more, like Sunday, I find something to do, you know. And, um, Eventually, the car broke down, and that sucked. And so, <laughs> I'm sorry. The car broke down, and it, it was terrible. It was terrible. And so I was like, "What? What? What? I do? You know?" And so I put a thousand dollars in the car to get it fixed, and I gave it to my mom, and it broke down again. And so I realized I wasn't doing what I said, what I agreed to do. Yes, sir. And so uh, I started back coming to church. I made a second covenant with him, with my best friend. He, he has a gastric bag and stuff. He went through some stuff with his stomach. And I said, oh, God, just help him out. And I, I do more in the church. I do a little bit more. So that's when I started coming to cut the grass and come to do stuff for the church. And I eased up a little, a little bit again, and he almost died, and he went to the hospital, he almost died. Uh, I prayed for him, I prayed with him, and then uh, I realized I wasn't doing the right thing, so I started back in the church. I ended up in the missing link somehow, and <laughs> it, it's been great. It's been great, and I'm going I'm to stick with it, but he's supposed to get off the, the bag in March or either April, and so I'm praying for that. But I, I said all that to just say when you, when you make a covenant, just don't break it. Just don't break it because he be quick to take whatever you had from you. That's all. Amen, Mr. Nico. It, it's your honesty and your openness that uh, that we see God. God has a call in His life. He's been trying to tell Him all along, Nico. I've died for my son has died for you. I make agreement with Him, and and and, and He has an. We talked about an intimate and a personal relationship. Son, He has a relationship with the Lord. That He'll talk to the Lord and ask Him something, and He said, "God said okay," and He did every time. God do what He said He was going to do. But then we, we're the covenant breakers. I'll start by saying, uh -huh. we don't keep eye on, are we? But then when somebody confronts you, whether you say you were going to help do this right here and you don't do it, then we get angry. How dare you not? But you made an agreement. You made, by the way, y'all can turn in y'all uh, monthly books uh, right now. 
Your books? Put them on. The missing link. Mm-hmm. I wanted to remind them on yesterday, Miss Clem. I did. I really wanted to remind them on yesterday. There you go. I got one. Desiree, you got any books? Jay got books, right? Well, y'all off the hook. So what's going to save the team is we got one person got We got three of them who got them. One person to turn them in. If the other two will give us the books, y'all be where y'all need to go. If not, they hold the team back. Terrence, you got your <laughs> You too. <laughs> Jay. No, 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 no. Because I'm when I get out of work, I'm, I don't call me. Yeah, when I go home, I'm gonna eat and go to sleep. I don't want to be bothered with y'all people. Then, now, nah, dude, I mean, it's due now. It's due today. First is tomorrow. Yeah. Who was gonna bring the book to my house this evening? Realistically, huh? No, nah, you gotta do it now. I need them now. The agreement was by the end of the month. Today is the last day of the month. Tomorrow is the first. We start a new month. Go ahead, Miss Kesey. Can the Abraham said, "Can one person bring grace?" Yes. 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 Go ahead. I um, got a lot out of the lesson with the covenant. And I think what really spoke to me um, is just, I just saw God as being very gracious throughout all of the process, all of the different You saw covenants. grace? I did, yes. All right. Um, and I know he dealt with the people of the Old Testament you know, more harsh than he does with us because of the love of Jesus Christ. But I did see grace all throughout it. And the reason I say I see grace is because, like you said, we are the covenant breakers. We are the ones that he, he like Nico, we have this agreement with us. I need you to do these the 613 laws. And this is the guideline to live by with your fellow brother and sisters and with me so we can all live in harmony together. These are the guidelines. And if you do these guidelines, these are the blessings that you have you know, that's awaiting you if you just follow these guidelines. And then I thought about Jesus Christ, you know, coming to as the new covenant, you know, and he fulfilled the 613 laws. And it really made like a light bulb go off. That's why he said he didn't come to abolish it. He, I came to fulfill it that's right. so that you guys can walk in the blessings of the covenant. Right. And that covenant is my blood. So it just felt really loud and clear to me. Outstanding. Yeah. That's good. He did not, according to Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, he did not abolish the law. He fulfilled it. He filled it to the full. So now because he kept everything, we follow him. That's going to be the essence of what we're going to is the New Testament. For the record, guys, I did want to tell y'all about the book. I want to remind y'all. I really did. I did tell Angela, Pam, and Geraldine about the book that I wanted to tell them to do it. But I also wanted them to be proactive. I want them to do something without being told or being asked. And I want to see what kind of excuses they have about why your work is not done. Because one thing about unfinished work, it won't suffice with Christ. You've got to do your work. And when you don't do it, just say, you know what? I dropped the ball on them. I really messed that up. Ask for forgiveness and move on. And as Christians, the covenant says, we are duty bound to forgive them. And it's over, and we move to the next level. That's the way it goes. Now, now, that's the word. That's the new covenant. Go ahead, Ms. Desiree. Yes, sir. Um, I was just thinking uh, that the Bible is, is, is well balanced. And I, I say that because Good. a lot of my friends, they like, well, the Bible is contradictory, and you know, that's why they want to believe it. I was like, but it was that way because it wasn't the right way. Like, that's why Jesus came for it to, you know, be fulfilled so that it will make more sense and it'll be balanced. Um, 
And I was also um, thinking about people are comfortable in their delusions, um, yes. even if it takes them yes. longer, even if it hurts them more, yes. even if, you know, they lose people and, you know, unable to love just because it, it gives them a sense of security when, I don't know, it just makes sense to them. And so they'd rather just stay somewhere that makes sense rather than, you know, risk being hurt. And, I, you know, I just feel like we should get past that. You know, Ms. Delray, hold on before you walk around. I had this talk with Keith yesterday at the thing, right? When you have friends who's with all this chaos and confusion and, and, and going on in the world, and people say, where is your God? Where is this Jesus? So you start out by telling them, you know what? God promised that he had a solution. But sin has been the world since creation time. Evil has been here since creation time. God promised us that we would get his son, Jesus. And he came. And everybody said, the world celebrates this Christmas. And then not only when Christ died, see, this is your conversation with them. Then when Christ died for us, when he went to the cross and died for you and for me, he promised that he was going to leave his Holy Spirit. And his spirit lives in me. And that's how I get to tell you about Jesus now. No, I'm not perfect. I'm, as a matter of fact, he lives in me, and I'm the worst guy I've ever met in my life. It's me. But Christ's spirit lives within me, and I'm a fallen human being. And when you get to know God's son, Christ's spirit will live in you also. Amen? So you got to have a response to the people in the world. And I, I beg you and Kesey, have your friends call me. I want to talk to your friends. I do. I would love to talk to your friends. I'm, I'll be patient with them. I'm not going to talk. I would just love on them and listen to them. But I, and that's why we teach, though. We want you guys to know how to do it. But I'd love to talk to your friends. Go ahead, dude. Oh, well, first off, I want to apologize about the book. I, I you are forgiven, Terrence. I was uncertain about the time frame, but that's not an excuse, you know, so I do apologize for that. And yeah. uh, Hold on, but you do remember February only has 28 days, right? Right. <laughs> and the day is? 20. 20. All right. We accept your apology. But, yeah, Over. Yeah, Done. Yeah, Move yeah, to sir. Next. And, um... Just about the covenant, God truly is a covenant keeper because I just think about my life and how I went from where I was before to where I am now with the blessings that he has bestowed upon me. So it's just it's just proof and evidence in my life that, you know, he truly keeps everything that you pray to him for. Do me a favor, sir. Bob, hand this to him. I want you to read this question I, that I had that the Lord gave me. Yes, they're at the top of my page. Let, let Terrence read that out loud for me. The question that, that I wrote to my man. Okay. Um, did you live the truth to the ones you love? Was your life the evidence, proof who Jesus is? Isn't that what he just said? That's all I'm saying. See how God will speak? I didn't know what Terrence was going to say. Terrence didn't know what the Holy Spirit gave him to say. But when you repent and you do it God's way, God will speak so loud. God will speak so loud, and it's all about him, and it's not even about us. And, and when he repented, God was already forgive and confirm his repentance with what he gave me. Come on, somebody. That's what it's all about. Go ahead, Mr. J. I follow up as well. Uh, I would like to apologize for not being prepared. Um, no excuses. I don't have any excuse. Uh, so I do want to say, though, from our reading and from our studying, uh, we talked about a lot of different things. But one thing that stood out to me was about what you, you mentioned, there will believe a big lie. So when we talked about, um, you know, covenants and promises, we, we kind of talked about it, but we didn't get too deep into it, but talking about costs. So it's almost like they're willing to, other people are willing to believe in a big lie because it's not costing them anything. It's not costing yes, them to have to die to themselves. But to me, I'd rather die to myself and get salvation than not and feel like I'm getting whatever I'm getting here and then die and go to to... to the judgment seat and God said, well, depart from me, I know you're not. That's it. Yes, sir. So I think that's having that, that conversation and having to understand them, at least with our generation, I think that it, that would help them not feel so focused on believing a big lie just to talk about the cost so that they understand what they're, they're giving up. 
Here's what we're going to do. Be, and your, your repentance is accepted, period, and it's over. And we're, we're going to go ahead with the podcast, but if I, you know, if I encounter any spirits that want to stop and challenge, we, we can't go anywhere. But you guys need to go back and listen to this lesson and what you said and what was said in order to move forward. Because y'all said a lot of powerful stuff. But that's the antidote to where y'all trying to go and reach a generation. And it's not easy. It's not. But all y'all said some powerful stuff that's really good. And these covenants make an agreement with God to do what you say you were going to do. Go ahead, Miss Eva. I just want to say that I have always been quick in confronting God about keeping his end of the covenant. And this convicted me that I hadn't been keeping my end of the covenant because I kept saying, you know, Lord, you know, my son, this is your child. This is what you said. You said, bless the male, the open's womb. I was giving him all this, you know, back to him and stuff. And then God convicted me that I wasn't doing my part. I wasn't telling him what he was doing wrong. I wasn't telling him that he needs Christ in his life. I wasn't giving him what God was, you know, wanted to pour into him. And, and when I was convicted of that and I started, you know, giving, you know, what God was giving to me to tell him, changes started happening. And, and I, I was telling Ms. Clem this morning, I appreciate her so much because by her speaking to me that one day, it, made, it just made everything change in my life and in his life. Because what God was giving me, I started giving to him. And this lesson just told me I wasn't keeping my end of the covenant. I was, I'm quick to say, God, this is your problem. God, you handle this. God, you take this. You take this. But I was not keeping my end of the, of the, of the covenant. And I just, I just saw it in this. And I just, I just thank God. I thank God for his word. That's why the Holy, how, how the Holy Spirit speaks to you. What Nico said about it, and God said, okay, I asked the Lord, God, if, if you give this, this vaccine and you make it safe and you let me take it, and I can be all right and I don't have an allergic reaction. And I took my first shot and haven't had an allergic reaction. I preached this thing louder, clearer, better. I made, I made a deal with God that well, what, that's what I'm going to do because I was going to pump it up because of, he let me live through, again, the worst sinner that I know of, and I'm, I'm where I am because of his grace. But yeah, I, I push the truth. The truth of the matter is the vaccine works regardless of what social media says. Science and the data point says that it works. I'm proof that it works. Yeah, as what Ter uh, Terrence said, I will call you Deacon Terrence. Mm. But, you know, <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I just want to say, look, when you make an agreement with God, keep your end of the deal. Keep it. You, you know what you ask God for and to do. God, if you give me a certain wife or a certain husband or a certain job or a certain whatever it is, keep your end of the deal. Keep it. Go ahead, Ms. Diana. Every Sunday, I'm seeing more and more how this works. Just listening to what Miss Eva said about her son, and you know, making an, making a covenant, and you know, expecting God to do this, but we're not really doing our part. And I just thought about with my son, and it just really, like I said, every Sunday is just. I'm seeing more and more how this works because we make these these covenants and we really don't count the cost. You know, we don't look at the 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 what ifs, but we need to look at all of that before we before we make these covenants. You know, Miss Jamaica, Miss Eva, she was confronted with this as she walked through the door. This morning. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. But here's the deal. If you don't give God the praise, she don't get the breakthrough. See how when you sit back and God gives you a testimony and it wasn't even about you, it was about her. Because I, I don't know if you knew what she was told, but I do. But I'm, that's how God works. That's how he operates. God has a plan that it is perfect. And the word is, is a perfect treasure if we just stick with the word of God. Go ahead, Pam. You're not on. You're not on. Try it now. For the first time in a long time, I'm living right. I've done right by everyone except for you all at the link. So please forgive me. I've been trying to get my life together, 
but it ain't together without you all in it. I don't know how I can be of more service being so far away, but I'm willing. I made a commitment to the link years ago, and, want, and I want to fulfill that commitment. Please forgive me, and please help me find a way to serve Christ better through you. You know, Mr. Mario, you, you're giving right now your testimony. He's in California, and saying he's saying that he's listening, and it's just 7.30 in the morning out there. But he's participating. He's fellowshipping. He's in. That's the part that we need, that the gospel we know is going from here to California right now. We know that right now, real time. So, you know, we know that God is at work, and all of these moving pieces, again, God has placed them. But everybody got to unashamedly. And the title of my sermon is Moral Cowardice. How many people are just afraid to tell the truth? I messed up. I, Nico said it. He said, I'm sorry for saying that like that. Y'all heard it? Yeah. But that's just the truth of the matter. I'm okay with that. But he called himself, and he, he repented for it, Johnny on the spot. I mean, that's what it's all about, people. When you make these agreements, let me go over these last two agreements, these last two covenants. We might have to go, well. <laughs> we're going to close out here. And we'll, we're not going to skip next week's lesson, and we're going to do the Abrahamic and the Davidic covenant, because I'd be remiss in my duties if I leave out the New Testament covenant. Period. So next week, we're gonna, we, we've done the promise of the covenant. We're going to do the Abrahamic covenant and the, the, the Davidic covenant and the New Testament covenant. Amen? Amen. I mean, you know, and see, it, real time, when, when I wanted to do something, the Holy Spirit just changed it. And it's his church, his ministry, we're his people. He get to change what he want to change, when he want to change it. It's obedience or disobedience. Amen? Thank you guys for your participation. Because that's what it's all about. I was going to push it to 1040. I was going to get this thing done. I was. You know, but, but I don't have five minutes to get ready for the sermon. But let's know, you know, I, when you hear God speak, you know he spoke. And say it's okay. To, to, can, we're not going by the book. We're going by the Holy Spirit. So, you know, we got the book as a map. But we're, we're being led by the Holy Spirit. Let's thank you guys very much. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much today in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we, we follow your son, Jesus. Lord, thank you for the prompting and the unctioning of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the comments of your people, Lord. Thank you for a service that's filled with grace and mercy and repentance and godly sorrow. Lord, thank you that you are who you say you are. Help us to be who you say we are, Lord. We desire so much to live up to our end of the deal. Father, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, if you will forgive all of us for all of our sins, Lord, for the way we think, the way we act, the things we do, for these attitudes that we have we don't understand, help us, Lord Jesus, to be all that we can be in you. Father, we love you so much. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come back and join us in 12 minutes, people. People of God, 12 minutes, 1045. Thank you. <laughs>